Thank you so much for coming here to see us. We, I know we really appreciate it. My question um, for whoever wants to answer, can you share what your absolute favorite episode was? That's so hard to pick just one. I mean, for me, I can't pick just one. So I don't know if everybody else can pick one, but to pick one well, absolute is really hard. For me, it's easy. It's the same as everybody else. Yes, it's the one where I go down the hill in the wheelchair. <laughs> Well, that's not my favorite episode. <laughs> <laughs> As we sit here here at Check the Clock, over table, Check the Clock. I'll answer my favorite episode would be the Sweet 16 episode, where the relationship between Laura and Almanzo transforms, and it really transforms the direction of the series, because Laura is no longer the little girl in pigtails who can go home and sit on Pa's lap. And yeah, so it was a very special time. That was great. Audiences always have responded wonderfully to that episode. So that's my favorite. <laughs> well, my favorite, my favorite episode is actually the God Sister, because where else are you gonna go to heaven, find a giant penny, scare somebody with a giant painted spider, and then get to see Jack again too? <laughs> well, my favorite episode is when Nelly and Miss Needle elope. Yes! <laughs> what? Wait, that didn't come out oh. right. And then... The pig farmer, dude! No, I elope with the pig farmer, and Nelly elopes with his son, Luke. Boom. And then Mrs. Olsen comes after them with a shotgun, <laughs> and has the minister unmarry them. <laughs> great episode, it's great episode. I love that one. Persia. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't the fire. It was the fire. <laughs> yes! It was the fire. Uh, some of you already know that. I have mentioned this before, previously. That that really was my favorite. There were many that moved me, uh, particularly the one that was kind of wrote for me, high cost of being right. Uh, the one experience that I felt with that was I walked into the big sound stage with the full orchestra, and for the first time I saw David Rose conducting what kind of is like Alice Garvey's theme for this episode, and a big picture of me was up on the big screen, and I, I started crying. I thought, oh, wow, this was incredible, very special. But yes, I loved the fire episode, and no, I didn't try to break open the window with Mary's baby. Honest, I didn't. I know it looked like it. I know it looked, I know I was battering it with the baby, but honest, I didn't try it. <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> Next. Lucy. You had a great experience where your oh, heart yeah. was jilted. Yeah. Well, yes, when you got married yes. to Laura, I fell in love with Parr. Do you remember? She was very tall. But Wonderful Jamie Cromwell. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And as you remember, Alonso Jane wasn't very advanced socially. <laughs> and, uh, she misinterpreted Harv's uh, desires. <laughs> so she ended up, as She's you remember, dangerous. leaving town. I know, she was heartbroken, and I haven't recovered. <laughs> Ron, how about you? What do you remember? Uh, well, I have a lot of fond memories of, of working on that show. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, His Father's Son was a great episode. Mm. It's, it's where uh, Mr. Edwards and his newly adopted son go out to try to bond, and uh, he's embarrassed to, tell, to let his son know that he is illiterate, and... John Jr. is a writer, and John Jr. doesn't know how to express himself verbally as well as he does by writing, and so he passes this very heartfelt note to his father during a camp campfire dinner, and, um, you know, Mr. Edwards pretends to read it and doesn't respond, and John Jr. is heartbroken, and that was a very special episode, you know, because it was about that formation of that relationship. I didn't have, my, I didn't have a father growing up, so it was a chance to sort of uh, live that through the role. So uh, I was very fond of that episode. Thanks. Does Baby Grace have a favorite episode? <laughs> well, we had one that we actually remember like fighting over the role. <laughs> that was the Christmas they never forgot. Christmas oh, oh uh, Christmas yeah. to remember. Okay. No, Christmas they never forgot. Christmas they never forgot. Yeah. And so we fought over the role, and I. That part was fun because I got the good part. She got all the good parts. I was like, oh, that was sweet. I did. Why did she get to open the present, lick the candy, and be out of the window? But the reason why I really like
like it is because that episode like just goes back in time and sees all the memories. And so for me, I remember so many different Christmas episodes and it's all encapsulated into one. Mm, yes. Very cool. There was one great moment at the end of He Loves Me, He Loves Me Not, where one of you had your first big screen kiss. <laughs> Her only kiss until she got married. Not married, but she was only their kiss. So this is a very wow, cool kiss. Wow, scandal. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Hard to follow. Um, I just have a question that I've always wondered about, and it's for Miss Beetle. Have you ever really smelled lemon verbena? And do you really like the smell? You would not believe how much lemon verbena I have. <laughs> I think for Christmas, the Christmas season, every year on the show, every kid in the show gave me lemon verbena. <laughs> and no, I kid you not, I, I was uh, sharing at a grammar school not long ago, I think it was a fourth grade class, and they actually had lemon verbena growing in the schoolyard. It's actually just a weed, you know, it grows wild. And they brought me a bouquet, a whole bouquet oh. of lemon verbena, and that was so sweet. Nice. Plus a basket with bath salts and body lotion and spray cologne. And <laughs> I still have lemon verbena, and yes, I like it. You like it, okay. I have a question over here. Which carry fell down the hill in the open? Oh, good question. Yes. Good question. Good oh. Sydney fell down the hill. Nice. <laughs> It's actually spliced, so I run to the top, and then Sydney get, it cuts into Sydney. But Sydney's Sydney's the one that actually falls down the hill, <laughs> which seems to be a pattern I continue throughout my whole life. <laughs> oh. There's a rumor that one of you fell down the hill, so now we know it's Sydney. Did you? Were you getting up? I fell in the well and then tipped over in the outhouse. <laughs> I that was, the, that was the one where Michael said Miss Beetle kills the kids again, right? <laughs> but I, I, to answer your question, Charlotte, I think those two episodes get confused because when I run down the hill and fall, I get back up and walk. But in the mine shaft one, Lindsay actually falls in the shaft, but when we filmed the rescue scene, which was back on the set, I actually got patted down with dirt and walked up the hill to be rescued. <laughs> <laughs> So are you still in, in the well? <laughs> I'm still in the well. <laughs> Somewhere. There's a question down there. Um, hi, I, I love you all a lot. We um, love you too. As if I know you, and I feel like I know you. And I, I remember when Michael Landon died, it was like that happened to me, even though I know it didn't happen to me. And I, and I know you've lost some other cast members over the years. I'm just wondering, of the ones you've lost, if you have had, like any special memories of any of them that you could share. Oh, oh gosh. Big one. Well, I mean, I still miss, first of all, Steve Tracy to this day. Steve Tracy was such a wonderful, wonderful person and a great kisser. And, um, <laughs> and the only person who could tell Mrs. Olsen to shut up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he died, he died relatively young. He was only, he was only 32. He died, he died of AIDS in 1986. And that's when I started volunteering at AIDS Project Los Angeles. And since then, that's why I became really an AIDS activist and been involved in AIDS education really since then. Many of you asked me about Merlin today when you went through the lines. And he was, um, as, as all of you know, an extremely big, strong, kind-hearted, sweet, so intelligent teddy bear. And uh, somebody brought up the other day how, how, how meek and mild and sweet he was on Little House and in person, and then you put him on that field, and apparently he was not quite so much. He was extremely <laughs> brutish and, and strong. He was an exceptional man, and uh, I miss, miss him greatly. I personally was a very close friend to Richard Bull, who played Mr. Olson. We worked in the same theater together in Los Angeles, and uh, I also miss him, and I see his wife and uh, Catherine McGregor very often because they both still live in the actor's home in Los Angeles. And I will always miss uh, Victor French, mm. played Mr. Edwards. He was such a wonderful person and so funny. 
And he was, he was also a director on many of the episodes. Mm. And the one I'll be forever grateful for is the, the episode where they fire Miss Beetle and get a man teacher. And so there was a scene where Pa has to come tell Miss Beetle that she's been let go and uh, because she can't handle the big kids in, this, in the schoolroom. And Victor came up, and it, it, the scene took place in Miss Beetle's little room in the boarding house. God knows where that boarding house was. I never saw a boarding house in <laughs> Walnut Grove. But they come to, that Pa comes to Miss Beetle's room, and she's, she knows he's coming, and she's waiting for him. And Victor came up to me very quietly and said, don't let Pa see you cry. Well, anytime somebody tells you not to, you know, you can't, I, they were just like ready to pour out of my eyes. But I had to pull up and be dignified and accept the decision of the, of the you know, school board. And I was just so grateful for that. Didn't make a big deal about it. It just came up very quietly and gave me the direction that you needed. And it also takes a fine actress to be able to pull that up, too. And I would like to interject something. I'd like to introduce Victor French's children who are here tonight. Victor Allen French and Tracy French. Can you stand up for a minute? Oh, I'm a